I want to tell you about two very important creatures in my life, okay? My parents have a little Jack Russell Terrier. His name is Rufus, okay? And Rufus, I, I go to work. I go to work maybe once, once a week uh, down at the office, and I tell it commute from home. So, but when I get there, this little dog jumps out uh, wherever he, he comes running over to the car, and he's like turning circles. He, he's so happy to see me. And, and it kind of just blows my mind. It's like he hasn't seen me in a week or whatever. He's like turning the circles. I mean, you guys know Rufus, right? Uh, he's turning circles. He's jumping up and down. He's, he's just like, you know, I'm so glad you're here. And on the other side of that, there's my wife's cat <laughs> who doesn't love me at all, apparently. Then I come home, and, and he, one of two things happens, seriously. He's laying on the couch. You know, he'll kind of pick his head up. Oh, it's you. Go back to sleep. Or he'll come over to the door. Wow! As if to say, you know, where's mommy? I don't care that you're home, but you know, where's mommy? And in fact, he even comes downstairs into my office. He even comes down there. She's gone through the day, right? And, and, and he'll come downstairs. He'll walk into my office to yell at me. And then he'll turn around and leave. As if to say, you know, where is she? That's all I want to say. And he, and he just leaves. It's like, so, so here I've got this dog. He, he loves to do things. He, he's very active. He chases squirrels around. He, he plays fetch. You know, he interacts with you. Uh, when, when Devin comes with me to, to Grandma and Grandpa's house, he, he will not leave Devin's side, okay? He loves, he loves his little boys, right? So uh, my nephews and then my son also, he, that dog is right there by him. But the cat, cat kind of tolerates Devin. I mean, he's a good cat. He, he, he'll sit there and let Devin pet him, but he's kind of like looking at me going, would you please make him stop? He's hurting me. I'm looking, and I'm not trying to say that, that dogs are good and cats are bad, and I like cats just well enough. I'm sure a lot of you guys have cats. You know, my wife says that the, the cats uh, hold the fabric of space and time together by their purring, because really scientists have no idea how or why they purr. But, but so we have to purr them so that the universe continues the way that it's, the way that it's going. So go home and pet your cats. But my question to you is, how do you respond to God? Are you so excited to hear from him that you're turning circles and jumping and, and you know, you, you do all the things like, a, like, like man's best friend, you know, the, the canine does? Or are you kind of just laying on the couch and not really interested in what God has to say and you might pick up your head and you're too comfortable where you are to really, to really hear from him? So what is worship? And now I know you guys have probably heard Plenty of sermons, plenty of people talking. What is worship? It's a very common topic, I guess, in our culture today. What is worship? Well, uh, I like uh, this particular definition. Worship is acknowledging God's existence, character, and works, and then responding appropriately to God's existence, character, and works. So why, why do we worship? Uh, well, short answer is because we are made this way. We were designed uh, this way. Worship is our purpose uh, by design. Uh, everybody worships something. You've heard that in, in one of the songs uh, that's, that's been out for a while now. Uh, it, it's how we're wired. So uh, Isaiah 43, God is, is, is talking through Isaiah. He says, bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, whom I have made. So we are made to glorify God. And I, I told you, you know, the last two sermons, you know, the heavens declare the glory of God. But, but that's really our purpose as well. We're the crown jewel of creation. Nothing else was created in God's image. And so now we are created to, to bring glory back to the creator. We're, we're created to glorify God. That's it's how, he's, how he's wired us. Worship is also an obligation. He tells us this is what we're supposed to do. Uh, he's very specific uh, when you look at uh, the Old Testament over and over again. But uh, who, who does he call first? He calls Abram. He calls Abram out of his, out of his home. And he says, here, I want you to go. He doesn't even tell him where he's going. He says, start walking. So Abram starts walking, and he says, I'll let you know when to stop. And sure enough, you know, he lets him know when to stop. He says, this is the land that I'm going to give to you and your descendants. So Abraham, Abram, he changes his name later to Abraham, uh, he, he, he begins this worship of God. He, he's, he's basically God talks to him, and he says, wow, okay, I didn't know you actually talked. And he says, how do I respond? Well, I'm going to respond with obedience. So now worship is also obedience. So he says, okay, I'm going to pick up my family. We're going to go until you tell me to stop walking. 
So how do we worship? Well, now, <laughs> here's, the, here's the funny part, right? You know, a most common answer, how do we worship? Well, we sing for 30 minutes on Sunday morning. That's what we did this morning. Every church I've ever been in, we, we sing at some point, right? Uh, worship and music have become synonymous in our culture, it seems. People talking, you know, okay, now it's time to worship. All right, everybody stand up, let's worship. Well, okay, yeah, the, I understand what they're saying, but worship and music, music is worship, but music is more of an expression of worship. Worship is something much, much deeper than that, and you alluded to that this morning, Pastor. So music, uh, it evokes an emotional response in us, um, like, like few other things can. I mean, you can look at paintings, and, and you can look at drama and everything else, and, and a drama, a very effective way to evoke emotion in the human soul. But music seems to, seems to really, I mean, you look at cultures all around the world, and, and music is such a huge part because it evokes this emotion in us. And again, we're wired that way. So there's something special about music. And if you look in the Old Testament over and over again, you see how you know, we're commanded to praise God with the harp and the ten-string lyre and all these other weird instruments I've never heard of. I never saw a guitar. It never says guitar in the Old Testament, but uh, it does say ten-string lyre. <laughs> now, a lot of times people say that they can't really connect with the music. And, and some of you may have experienced that uh, this morning. Uh, I spent uh, years in, in churches you know, kind of standing out there going, I, I just can't get into this. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't get into this. Well, personally also, I, I don't really connect with a football game. You're not going to see me jumping in the stands up and down and painting my face and getting really excited and high-fiving and, and, you know, chest-bumping perfect strangers, you know, because my team scored a touchdown. And for the record, you're not going to see me jumping around at a rock concert either. I, I, you know, the only time I ever jumped around at a rock concert was I was the one playing. You know, when I'm in the audience, that's, that's not how I'm wired. That's not really the way that, that, that I work. But what we have to keep in mind is that when we come into the church to, to worship God, to worship together our God and our King, there's a spiritual element that's there. I'll be as bold as to say that the Holy Spirit is, is present here in a way that he's not present at a football game. Okay, He's not present at a, a secular rock concert. Now, a Christian concert, on the other hand, and, and especially one that's geared toward praise and worship, the Spirit is there and is actively working in everybody to kind of draw us all together to go to one place together. So there's that spiritual element. There are really only two ways to worship, okay? When you feel like it and when you don't. <laughs> okay? So uh, besides that, now what we have to keep in mind is that when we, when we feel like it, it's easy. And a lot of you can, can walk in here on Sunday morning and like, hey, I'm, I'm ready to go. And Diana and I talked about that this morning, that we kind of come in with, with all the stuff that just happened on our commute to get here. The fact that we're running late already, the kids aren't dressed, whatever else. The guys are, you know, driving like maniacs this morning. You know, somebody just cut me off and I'm, work I'm walking into the sanctuary and, and now I'm ready to worship. No, <laughs> I don't work that way. Sorry, I know you guys don't work that way either. Uh, what we have to keep in mind is that we come here to, to bring honor and glory to God and to Jesus Christ. He's the one that, that paid, uh, he gave his life and he paid a ransom for us so that we could come here and, and do that. And, and, he, and he brings us together to bring glory to God. So when we remember that, and, and again, and and we're going to get to worshiping God with all of your mind. When you remember that, now you can, I think you can engage a little bit, you, a little bit better. It, you, you'll see in the heart, the mind, the soul, and the strength how, how to really go about that. So, so yes, the Bible teaches us that, that worship is so much more than just the, that 30 minutes of singing. And uh, let's go ahead and look at Mark 12. And uh, Jesus has just been asked a question by one of the scribes. The scribe asked him, what's the single greatest commandment? And Jesus answers, the first and principal one of all commands is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God out of and with your whole heart, and out of and with all your soul, or your life, and out of and with all your mind, with your faculty of thought, your moral understanding, and out of and with all your strength. This is the first and principal commandment. The second is like it and is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. So he sums up the sum of the law. And I